her body scan. I was like, eh, that was the warm up limit. No <laughs> chance. <laughs> yeah, and then we just did a wee, we did a body scan and then right into like a eight minute Tabata and then she did a heartfelt meditation, which was incredible. Really emotional for some people, really crying. And... Our meditations are good, eh? Lynette's meditations are good, like. You look like you've been in the sun. I, eh, there's a wee, there's like a wee sun trap at the front, eh? Wee right. sun trap at the front, so I'm just sitting there pretty much every day. The weather's been all right, eh? The weather's been not too bad. Oh, how's work? All right, so I've just got like a couple of classes eh, online. I've got a couple of private ones, some PT and do a bit of coaching and that as well. So it's ticking me over, eh? Although like I'm looking forward to getting back whenever that'll be like. Aye. I mean, are you just at your mum's? Aye, aye, I'm at my mum's now, aye, so, eh, uh, just, aye, there's no much you can do in a way, you've kind of just got to, like, accept how things are. That's, you know I mean? that's exactly what I did in the beginning, I wrote a big list of the things that were going to help me through this, and acceptance was at the top of the list. Aye, because if you start thinking about, like, what it was like, and what you hope, when you hope it's going to finish, or where you want to be, it's like, just your mind's like that because you didn't care, eh? So you have got to like find some sort of acceptance. It's like I, I'm, I've found it tough, like, but it, it's getting better. But it's, uh, aye, it's, it's, it's a tough one. But it's, uh, there has been like bonuses of it, like, Ken, just like, have enjoyed the, the slowness, like, definitely. Oh, me too, hundred percent. I'm, I think I've, I've enjoyed as well the, just not having such a busy. Like, where am I going next? What am I doing now? Oh, I've got this. Oh, I've got, I'm, you know, I've been working just as much as ever. And I think right. because I'm doing, all, you've got to do all your classes, haven't you? You've got to actually aye. take part. Aye, exactly, aye, you have, aye, big time, big time. You got wrecked, but. <laughs> well, no, I think when it first happened as well, it was kind of like uh, the thought of doing classes online and that, you were kind of like, oh, God, what, but then, you soon just kind of get used to it, eh? Yeah, yeah. You, soon, you soon get used to it, but uh, I much prefer face to face. Can I wouldn't like to? Uh, although if it ever goes back to some sort of normality, I think it might be an option to have a couple of online classes, can just for people that maybe can't make it. So, uh, aye. So when this thing kicked off, like me and Daryl have been planning to do this for a while, Zoe. So it just seemed like a. It seemed like a perfect opportunity to like just get on with it, eh? So we're just trying to like speak to people who have just overcame stuff and just who've got a story to tell in that and like what like what how your perspective has changed on certain things and all that. So like so like you own your own fitness business and it's just been like it just grew over the past three, four years. It'll be four years in September. Um, that I started and I'd got into fitness only six years ago. So six years ago, I was, I, I had never run in my life. Really? And I so never, like, like, need fitness at all? No, I'd done some, I did some, I used to go to the gym, at some gym classes before I had my daughter. And she's 16 now, so six years ago she would have been 10 and I'd done no fitness I walked places but that was it and I, I'd smoked since I was 10 years old and I was going through a really I'd left my husband would have been well, three years before that I think two I can't remember two or three years before that and that wasn't going very well it was never I never um he was never very happy about that so there was a whole load of stuff going on about that and my friend Laura Nolan asked people to run a half marathon for um, her charity, the Joshua Nolan Foundation, which had started um, when her son took his own life the year previous to that. Uh, right. So I, I had it was just one of these spur of the moment things. I said I'll run the half marathon. I, I mean, I'm, I signed up in February, and the half marathon was in May. Oh really? And I was still smoking and drinking and, you know, <laughs> and I, 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 obviously there was something pulling me to it, you know, there was something 
that I clearly I couldn't carry on the way things were going and it was really it was not a great situation with my ex and I just couldn't I just couldn't do it I knew there was something I knew life could be better than that and I, I didn't know this was going to be this the first stepping stone towards it but I took the took the leap I spoke to a pal who was a runner I was like can I do this I've got like 12 weeks she says that ah, of course you can so she in the first instance like yeah definitely go for it and she gave me some advice and my first ever run was home you'll laugh at this from the smoking cessation class in ox gangs and i ran home i went there because i thought I, I got home and my actual I, my mum was here and i just said what have i done i've signed up for a half marathon and i've just run 1.3 miles and I just about died. But I never let it stop me. I continued on with the stop and smoking and I started training for the half marathon. Oh, yeah. um, and raised over a thousand pounds and 12 weeks later ran the Edinburgh half marathon in not too bad a time for my first half marathon in 12 weeks training. Um, and thought I quite like this, quite like the feeling you get from the achievement, you know. Um, right. So, but I, I kind of hit a brick wall after that and thought, you know, I couldn't really run very far and I was struggling with motivation. So I signed up with a PT and it was just, it was from there that um, I really got my love of burpees. <laughs> <laughs> I do love a burpee, like, I do love a burpee, like. <laughs> Two hundred today, but <laughs> horrible exercise, like horrible exercise, right? <laughs> so what? And then you went with the PT, and then did you just decide to like train as one or? Well, what had happened was I started with him, and at that that time, it's, I actually took a stand against the situation that was going on, and I, I got the police involved in it. So that's you know, and I so I was in a pretty dark place at the same time that I signed up with the PT. And so what I found through fitness was it was giving me another focus. And every week I was getting stronger. I was getting fitter. I was finding I could do things that I just had no idea that my body was capable of doing. I was running faster, um, you know, and every time I did like a fitness test, I was smashing my results, you know, and it, it was just those little things like, you know, that really made me, and, I, and even now, when I think back to then, I never really realised what was happening. Oh. But I, did, I wasn't working out at that time because I was just really in a, you know, a funny place with everything that was going on. Um, and I'd only had enough money for six weeks of PT, but my mum bought me a block for my Christmas. And then, do you know, I just found, you find a way to, to right. continue. Um, and then I ran the... Edinburgh Half Marathon again the following year and took I think something like 15 minutes off my time and thought oh, I really like this and I just really you know I was starting to really realize that I could do anything when I'd done the marathon before the half marathon the year before it was the first time I ever ever thought believed in myself never before you know and realized that I could do whatever I set my mind to so when I was getting better and better through training and feeling better and I thought this I just want it this is what I want to do. I want to look at being able to do this as a career. I wasn't enjoying what I was working at before. Um, it wasn't working around family life and being a single mum. So I got trained, I borrowed money to do my level two. Um and then just started by teaching classes. And then just went for the business. Somebody, I, I was thinking about it and thinking about it. And a friend just said, just do it. Uh, what? I, said, I need leaflets. I need a website. I need this. She was like, just do it. And I tell you, four years on, I've still never had a leaflet printed. <laughs> and I've not got a website. <laughs> what were you doing before it, Zoe? I was a nanny. What were you? Uh -huh. So it just didn't work around my family. Like, the hours weren't great. Um, do you know, um, the kids were, my kids were having to, I was having to drop them in the school uh, playground before breakfast club opened so that I could get to work and I wasn't sure who was picking them up at the end of the day. And 
So it just wasn't working. So this was an opportunity and I just went for it. And it was a route, you know, at first, my, my, I just set up a Facebook page. <laughs> my first class, I had 15 people in it, which was amazing. And then obviously the numbers, you know, um, went down after that. But I had, I had no car at the time and I was cycling everywhere. And at night, at night, when I was, because I do it all outdoors, as you know, I was taking like wee portable floodlights with me and I'd put them in a rucksack and I'd cycle. Or the kids would have to come with me because they were still young. Aye. They'd have to come with me and they'd have to sit there while I was teaching my class. <laughs> um, and, do you know, really, I didn't have an awful lot of money, but I just went for it and I just kept going and I was committed to what I was doing. I loved what I was doing. Um, and it's just really, it's growing. From... If you look back, Zoe, like what do you think, like, so you've seen there, you were in like, and this is something that kind of fascinates me myself, eh? Like, you said you were in like a dark place, right? Before it, right? Do you think without that dark place, you would have, you'd be where you are now? Absolutely not. No. I might, I might have found, there might have been a different way into this path because I genuinely now believe that this is my purpose and my path and what I'm meant to be doing. Um, right. So, but I think you're not the without the the experiences that you've had, you aren't. Right. The, you learn from that. But the, I think what you're saying there, you're fascinated by that. People can choose to learn from it. People can choose to grow from it, or people can stay in that place, you know, and, and and think that that is the only way that there is for them and they get stuck uh, in that self-limiting beliefs and, uh, you know, place of old stories and this is all I'm worth and this is all that I'm ever going to have. And I think when people talk about things like abundance and manifestation, a lot of people will instantly think, well, you're talking about getting things, you know, having... Um, material things but you're not you know for me abundance is all the wonderful things that are going on in life around me obviously this situation at the moment I'm locked down <laughs> <laughs> but there are still wonderful things you know I've just done this charity event <clears throat> where we've raised a grand in an hour pretty much you know right. from doing what we love what two people have come together you know Lynette and I came together and we did what we love and that is abundance and we've manifested that to happen so it's not it's not all crazy we've had a thought we've made it happen do you know right, big time. Big time. Right. so I think that that's the thing people can think that they they can't you know they're just stuck in their thoughts aren't they stuck in their thoughts and um, I really even though I've taken this path it's only been in the last year or so that i've really realized what's happened on the path do you know i've been to, to through through things like meditation and doing my coaching my life coaching course oh. i really realized the stepping stones and i can look back and see how things have happened and what i've done to make that happen as well because you know? it's quite scary zoe i don't know what you think dan or like you get if you've got that thing inside you and like you've had, so what age are you doing? Oh, asking a lady their age. <clears throat> oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I will be 45 in a couple of months. Right, so that you, you're roughly what you said, four, five, six years ago. So you're like around about 40. And it was a year I turned 40. It's quite scary yeah. when you've got a bit of your life behind you and you're like, you've been a certain way for so long, but you've got this feeling inside that you had like the, you have to do something yeah. and, and it's like you, you know you've got to let that go but then at the same time you're like because it's you didn't care if it's going to work out eh? you like you, you just you didn't care and it's like but you've got to have that that faith and i, I admit it's something that i struggle with at times but i try so hard and like i, I can you've been through similar things as well Dara labor it's like that well, and then you, moving you on and you talk about these things like loads and i think it's like something that that we're both quite, like, I feel like quite, there's definitely something that happens in you. Mm. There's like, a, must be like an array of changes and like, obviously Zoe, your story is unbelievable. And I think that when you're going through like that time in your life where like you're having to drop off kids before school and pick them up and that, like no one, no one will ever understand like what you're actually going through in that moment. 
and how actually hard like those times are. Mm. And I think for me, like that's like 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 you said it before, Barry, about like can single mums raising three kids and two. And I think that was one of our first shows you mentioned something like that. Aye. Like just the way that that you've managed to like do all that, and then you've still at, at obviously your age taken a massive massive leap of faith to start your own business like at at the time like that you did and for it to come off like it's just for me like that's just amazing inspiring because loads of people don't make that jump loads of people then don't do it and then become bitter within themselves and then you know they start putting out like more negative energy whereas you realize that there was something in you that had to change and you didn't know how you were going to do it but you took the, the gamble and then, you, like you say, you can only connect the dots looking back. And that's a famous quote like, from, obviously, uh, uh, from Apple. And uh, I think, like, yeah, it's just that step moving forward in the gamble, like, obviously, me and Barry have been on kind of similar paths as well. And, you know, putting ourselves into, into the unknown and, like, even just, like, doing things, like, in business and in shows and stuff. Like, there is that thing inside you that's telling you to do it, and you know that you need to leave the past behind. But that process is, like, just, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. I think as well it's about, um, I mean, for me, I feel I've just really trust. I've trusted what would happen, and I'm not scared of failing. You know, I don't right. see, if this hadn't have worked out, although I never really thought about that at the time, I, right. you know, I just wasn't, I knew that I would do something, do you know, there was something, right. I would always fall back on something, but I think because it felt such a big pull, I just really wanted to help other people and inspire them to do the best that they can, do you know, and you hear people talking about living your best life and all of that, it's not, it's not, that's not what it's about for me, it's about just doing what you, the best that you can in that moment right. and trust that process and if you really believe in that and what you're doing, and don't let that negative talk come in and worry about what everybody else thinks. And I, do you know, I'm not saying I'm, do you know, every day you think about what other people think, <laughs> but, you know, but I do know that I'm 100% passionate about what I do. Um, and if something doesn't work, now I'll try something else, do you know, or if I'll try something in the business and if that doesn't work, that's fine. You just sack that and you do something else. You look at a different way right. to do it. And I had no idea before I was 40 that I, had, I would ever run my own business or that I had a clue how to do it. But, you know, and now I'm like, oh, right, yeah, actually I've got a wee bit of knowledge here and, um, and I'm making it work. Do you, know, it's, do you know, it's booming really, which is incredible. And it's... As well, for me, it's about inspiring other people to do things because they can look at me and I'm relatable, do you know? Right. You know, I don't even tell my whole story, really, do you know, <laughs> because I've got children and, you know, you just think, but, you know, I used to live a, a, a colourful life, <laughs> let's just say. This is, um, this is a family show, Zoe, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's clean, it's clean, don't worry. <laughs> um, but... Do you know, and I really want to, one of the, so there's some, there's a, a few things that have really um, made a huge difference to me. The first thing is gratitude. Mm. Is I have felt grateful for absolutely everything that has happened, especially since starting the business. A couple of things in particular, um, when I had that, I was cycling about on a bike, my mechanic found me a car did i tell you this story before that <laughs> he found me a car that was going to the scrap he'd been owned by another mechanic it was going to the scrap yard he says look they'll let you have it for the money they would get from the scrap i was like thank god it's got two months mot on it so you'll never get it past them well two years later i had that car and every single day i mean it was a beast it was a tank but it passed its MOT. So I got it for 50 quid and it passed its MOT. Um, and I was so, so grateful for that car. I really was. And it meant that I could start seeing clients and go to their houses. I could do different classes because I could carry equipment. I was only doing Metafit to start. And then I did a kettlebell, you know, trained to 
to do kettlebell and then it was after that that I went on and did my level three PT but um and I was still struggling for money but I'd never felt so rich as I did when I was as poor as I was I'd never felt so rich because of what was happening my kids were looking up to me and that's one of the most important things as well is the fact that they were looking to me as a positive role model they hate all the Woo woo chat that I give now, as they call it. <laughs> um, and you know, they just roll their eyes when I when I tell them to be grateful and to not think about other people's opinions or to consider others when they're you know all the stuff that I kind of go on and they're like, oh right, whatever, mum. One's sixteen now, and one's twelve, going on sixteen. Um, so this is such a like. Or, I've just recently, since this all kicked off, in my, like, after my, like, meditation visualization in the morning, right, just get my diary and try and write five things that I was grateful for the previous day. And it can just be, like, a tiny wee thing, like, somebody maybe, so, for example, my, my mate, uh, where did I see my mate? No, in the park. And we had, like, a wee half-hour PT session. But it was just, like, a wee, uh, I didn't expect any money for it. And he transferred like a tenner into my bank ten later. So we think like that. And it, see if you can start to do that. It does kind of like shift your mindset a wee bit. Like you start looking for the good things. If you, it, like it's, it's weird. And that, it's, that's quite a new thing for me. So uh, I totally like understand where you're coming from with that. Like, you do something like that every day as well, Daryl, do you know? Yeah, I'm actually doing a, a 31 days of gratitude on my Instagram. Oh, yeah. And I'm on, it's day 11 today, so I've, I've not been doing it, but sometimes I'll do it first thing in the morning. If something just comes to me, but sometimes I'll wait for the end of the day and I'll really ponder my day and really think about how it went. And it's, it's quite amazing to like what you can find, but I'm, I'm the same as usual. I, I don't see, like, the, I'm, I'm really into the law of attraction and living abundantly and the gratitude thing and stuff. And I'm, I'm reading a lot of the books from like Napoleon Hill and stuff like that. And it's funny because I see abundance as like having good people around you and, you know, being in the right environment and being able to walk down to the beach or through the forest and, you know, with the kids and, you know, mm -hmm. showing them like a, a different side of life. And I think that, that that's living abundant. Like I'm, I'm very fit and healthy. I have all these things and, and we, as much as we strive for more, I always, I always really appreciate what I've got. I don't, it didn't always come from a lot, so I always appreciate what I do have now and the opportunities that we have in front of us now and the teachings, if you learn and you really understand and coming from a place of love, that life will just always go in your favour. Do you know what I mean? Even when you're having a bad day, you know it's like, right, just put that one to bed, it's a bad day, smash it tomorrow. And, you know, when you've got that kind of attitude, things just come to you. And it's, it's, it's quite simple, but at the same time, it's, it seems so hard. It's just like it feels... To people that don't have it, or when I didn't have it before, that kind of way of thinking seemed like such a reach. But it's just a mindset switch. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's quite... Aye. Somebody said... Hey, this, this is going to... Do you think it's even tougher nowadays to be like that within this situation? Like, having that, like... Almost like that, trying to stay positive. Do you think because of what's going on just now, it's like making it a bit tougher to be like that? Or... Do you still find it as easy to do? I think when my life was so busy before, I found it harder because I had so many things going on. I think for me, this has been the biggest blessing for the whole world. But if you look at, if you really look at what the world was like before, but with the any chase never got any respect in the past. Now they are the, the heroes of this age, like of this, of this time. Old people weren't getting the, the support that they were supposed to be getting. Now they are, being treated like the royalty that they, that they deserve. Like, so for me, like, we, we are all being treated as, like, numbers and robots, whereas now we're getting the chance to really sit back and think about what we really want moving forward and to, to get the much-needed rest that we, that we can. It's like the universe has, has came in. It's like if, the, if, if things aren't be going to be done right, the universe will come in and it will make it right. And I always feel like this is our time now. I feel, that's my, my, only my opinion, is that people can dwell on the things that are going wrong or they can look for a way to really move forward and to follow that passion. It's like a, a window of opportunity that we maybe never, ever, ever get again. 
totally. Someone said to me, life. well, someone said to me last week, um, I've been doing quite a few posts about this um, on my Instagram, but somebody said to me last week, there's not every day is good, but there is good in every day. And, and I, I actually, I agree with you, Daryl, about this. I don't think we feel any differently to how we did before. I just think we've got more time to sit with our feelings and our thoughts and people who have never had, people who have used distraction to not have to do that are now having to do that. I think we're always on an emotional roller coaster of learning and of situations that arise that we've got to kind of think about and deal with. But I don't actually think we are feeling any different because of this situation. And I, I genuinely believe that this slowing down, I mean, it's tragic what is happening um, out there. And, you know, and I agree as well that NHS are our, our heroes. It should have been like that. Any, you know, that's how it should be. It, it is how it should be. Um, you know, all these people that are key workers, you know, that were at the bottom before are now at the, the top of the appreciation. But I think... I think there are a lot of people at the moment, the people that are finding this the hardest are people that have never had to sit with their feelings or have chosen not to, or don't have a clue how to, or don't do any meditation or gratitude or anything. I think they're the ones that are finding this the hardest. And I do genuinely believe, I mean, we're frustrated because we're in and we can't go and see people. And I'm certainly, you know, I'm here alone with my kids. Um, I'm grateful because I've got, amazing neighbours that we've got a gate in the back fence so we often you know we open that up and we're doing shopping for each other and you know we've sat and had a, a, a few drinks in the sunshine and um, gutted and not quite as brown as that <laughs> I need to work on I need to work on my time I've got a slice on me in my room that's what I had <laughs> you better not <laughs> um, but you know I think I think it's um, a great time for, for slowing down and the mind is not so busy. We're not constantly thinking about what we've got to do next, what we've got to do next. I mean, I've been working loads, but in between the working, I'm just here in my house and I'm not having to rush off to the shops. I'm not having to rush to think what's coming next. I mean, I'm a, I love a routine. I, I, I do a morning routine um, which hasn't been at that, I've not found as easy. I feel more lethargic. I don't know um, why that is, because I've, you know, I'm pretty active, but I just have felt a little bit Aye. lethargic, but maybe not getting as much fresh air as normal. I'm used to being outside all the time, you know. Um, but I do, I think you've got to find the good in every single day. And even if it is the sunshine coming in your bedroom window, when you wake uh, up, exactly. or or somebody smiling at you in the street, you know, simple. Now you're spot on. Like, you're spying. You're, you're spot on. I think it's like this has definitely had a weight on us all, in some way, shape, or form. I feel like we've all kind of went through this together, and it is affecting everybody differently. But you're spot on with what you're saying. I think obviously, Barry, you've done loads of meditation. When I can go involved with you and the people you put me on to, is like if, if I never had that kind of training, then I don't know what I'd be like now if I was still the same person of a, of a few years ago, I think I'd really be, I'd be struggling, but, you know, starting to learn to do meditation and these practices and stuff has definitely, definitely helped. And for everybody that you can speak to that's, that has done it, seems to be, you know, saying the kind of similar things, eh? I think it's just taking that time, like, to be honest, like when I, last year was my first year full time in the business. And that's where I kind of slacked on it because I was like, rushing about so much, but now I feel this time I've kind of got back into it. And I think it's always just allowing yourself to like, just give yourself time every day to check in with yourself. Again, if you're rushing about mad in that, sometimes you can make, I don't know, sometimes you can make like weird like decisions if you're no grounded and like, just be like, right, how? And I think I really big believer in like, so you always kind of know what to do, eh? Like you yourself, I think if you can thingy out all the nonsense and just, I think inherently inside your intuition or whatever you want to call it, always knows what's best for you. But I think 
And this is what I think this time is allowed. Like before, busy, 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 but now we're starting to like just take some time for yourself. And I think with that it just comes through more like uh, I just the ability to really listen to what you should do next and how things are going to be and stuff. So uh, I just I think a lot of people are me included are like thinking about how their life's going to change if this continues. Like, is it going to be the same? Is it going to be slower? That I, 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 and it's something that you can't answer, eh? But I know me for personally, I think I've really learned to appreciate that. Like Zoe, that is a fitness people. You're kind of like going, wow, there, 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 there. And I can't go back. That is something I didn't think that I want anymore. So, and I didn't care if you still have had any similar realizations. So, uh, aye, it's been good for that. I, uh, I'm quite keen to, to look into what I can do online a bit more because my, my classes are so much busier online than they were. I, I mean, they were busy in the park, but, you know, I'm, I've got so many more people attending the classes and it means that I'm at home a bit more with the girls. Um, although they're older and not really interested in me, um, they just want me to feed them. <laughs> <laughs> feed them and make sure their clothes are clean um, but I think it'll just be looking at what I can maybe do online a bit more and obviously I want to um, do a bit more with my coaching practice because I've done that course and not done aye, aye. anything much with it so far so so Zoe did you get to a point where like uh, did, did you get to a point where you, you were in your business can you say you, like, you didn't know if it was going to do well or did you get to a point where you're actually like, at the end, where you were like, shit, this is actually working. What is, like, did you, <laughs> did you come here, did you ever get to that point? Because it must be like, must make you like feel super proud when that kind of stuff happens, eh? Do you know what? I'm still not very good at patting myself on the back for my achievements, but um, I, when, I tell you when I did know it was going well. well there's a, f a couple of things. So a few of my clients that come that just came to the classes that I've never run before. I had like 13 people running the half marathon or part or one of the races in the half marathon the first year that I did the, the class in the set uh, the classes. The second year I had like 31 people from that came to the classes running either the half marathon or the 10k. Um, and that I think that really brought people together. Um, but when, so this is, I mean, this is not meant to be a sad, it is a sad story, but um, we had a barbecue to celebrate. It was the, I think it was the second, I think it was second year of MacFit. Um, and we had a barbecue in the park where I do the classes. And that, on that day, there was like, there was about 50 people there. People brought their kids, their husbands, we had a barbecue, we had a drink, we were, you know, just celebrating. And I got a call to say that my cousin had died mm -hmm. on, at, while I was at that barbecue and he'd taken his own life. So a few months on, the, the whole team, obviously I had to leave the barbecue and go and see my cousins. And um, a few years on when I... Um, a few months on, sorry, they organised a surprise party for me and there was like 30, 40 people there and I walked into a room and they'd have banners up like, Zoe, we love you, Team MacFit forever, all this Team MacFit stuff. There was, they'd made cakes and everything that said Team MacFit and I just was blown away and I think, I think it was maybe then that I realised that it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'm doing something right, you know? <laughs> um, but I'm not great at I'm not great at stepping back and thinking, wow, you know, look how far I've come. Well, maybe I should do it a bit more often. But it's a massive thing to do, like just go and do something on your own from scratch. It's just like uh, any but like after being self-employed for a year or more, I take my heart off now to anybody that starts anything from scratch, like anybody. Because it's it, it, it's proper tough, like proper. Funny tough. though the way it works out. Um, I mean, I was a I was a roof. I'm a roofer still to trade, but I'm obviously tapping them out to personal development and coaching and, and stuff like that. 
and I've been trying to move over and it's been hard but when I was 27 I lost my job I was a single parent to Ollie at the time and I was obviously so not really having a stable place to stay and stuff but I remember thinking like at that time like I'm just going to start self-employed with it and just just kind of run with it. I didn't have any upfront costs or anything like that. But it's funny the minute that I made that decision, the things started to actually just fall into place. Like I managed to get a van. I managed to get a, a, a little payment from my old company, which was enough to get me a van. And I had some tools, but then my granddad gave me some tools and I had, had some from my, my dad as well. And then so it was like, it was just all kind of fall into place. And then we had a homer. So that homer then turned into a bigger job down in North Berwick. Uh, and then that job turned into more work. And it was like, it was weird the way that you like, when you make that decision, it's like the universe wants to help you. But uh, if you're kind of holding on to the old and not just going for it full throttle, that's, I feel that's where the struggle is because you're not completely let go and moving in. Like you'll know yourself. So you obviously you went for it and it's, and it's worked. I went for it at that time because I had no other option but to go for it. You know, it was, you know, it was like that or nothing. And obviously, I, I don't know what your situation was when you decided to go self-employed, but, you know, you've, you've done brilliant since you've been self-employed, you know, and you've been so busy. So it's, you know, it's, I don't know, it's just, it's, there's something in that, I feel. Like, the minute you make that decision, eh? It's, right. boom, it's go, it goes. But it's sometimes not as easy as that when you've got so many things hanging over you. <laughs> I know, I know. See, that must have been, like, tough as well, Daryl, because, like, that's... Man, that's like, I was just about to ask Zoe, I was like, do you think there's like, do you think there's any challenge that people can overcome? But like, that's a massive challenge, Daryl, as well. Like, uh, strange, uh, that's funny because I was- Unemployed I, and like, you've obviously like a single parent and now that, that's like- oh, I, That's what I'm saying, it was, it was one of those things, I was lucky, I, um, I had a place to stay with Ollie until I managed to get a flat and stuff. And it was like, things always, I always kind of had that attitude though. like. But even when things weren't quite going right, I always kind of had that attitude. And I used to always kind of speak to, like, the father or the universe and say, like, you used to have conversations and being like, you know, this is going to work out and have that inner kind of oh, nice. process in my mind. I never, ever doubted it. I always kind of hit fear head on. It wasn't until actually more, like, recent, recent, when I started to put myself out there a bit more and I had a few knockbacks and things didn't quite go right that my confidence was actually quite knocked. So like starting the show and that again was actually quite a probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Like start right. leaving the, the company that I built at that time, maybe because it was so I built it so stable, that that was harder trying to make that transition from becoming a roofer to a life coach to feel I had more to offer. That was harder and doing this and having the confidence to do it. Right. So that that time is probably. I didn't even I didn't even really think of it as hard. I just thought as as a bit like usual. It was like it was day to day. I was like today I need to wake up and I just need to make it through this day, and then the next again day it was the same, and it was repeat. You know, and it's there's tough times in here, man. Like you say, want to keep it clean, but it's like aye. <laughs> <laughs> way, I. Think by the way, you've just, okay. made a, you've just made a public declaration that you're going to do coaching, so it's on here recorded. So that's like. It's out there now, like, so there's, there's, there. no, there's no going back to that, man. So what's no. the plans for Mac for them? Where, like, where do you go from here, like? Um, I've got a few big ideas. Um, one, the biggest one, obviously this, this whole situation puts it on the back burner, but it's, that's all, that's the only place it is. It's on the back burner. It's not completely yeah. gone. I had a, a vision to have a... Um, a centre, so it would be a centre for fitness and well-being, um, and have somewhere that I can still do my classes outdoors. But having had just a winter, do you know, Daryl, the other thing is I do all my classes outdoors. Barry laughs at me when I come down and do classes with him. Do you know, he's like, "Oh God, how can you do that?" Do you know, it's like pouring rain, snow, wind. You know, and I rarely, and I think that's the other thing. My commitment to my classes, I rarely will cancel a class and um, I've got people that turn up in the the most hideous of weathers, you know, um, because we'll always feel amazing afterwards. And that is really, you know, that's what the fit, that's what it's all about for me is 
the achievement and the fitness, how you feel at the end of it. You know, if somebody comes to me and says they want to look a certain way, I'm going to send them a different PT. You know, it's, it's I'm, I'll get you fitter, stronger, feeling better, healthier, happier, believing in yourself and actually loving what you've got and really appreciating the body that you, you've right. got. Do you know, um, but I think so. But really, that's my that's my big thing is to have that center. But you know, with the way things have gone, we just have to wait and see. I had a, I had somewhere in mind. I was going to try and get funding. I'd been asked to do. I'd actually been asked just before this all happened to do a boot camp for the MSPs. Oh, really. <laughs> So, um, which may happen if things all, you know, settle down. See if we can get Nicola Surgeon doing a few burpees. <laughs> That's a, it's something I've been thinking about recently, Zoe. I didn't care what you, you think, and it's... So the now, like... So I think... Where, where do you both sit now, then, on, like, goal-setting? Because me, personally, I've always been quite big on, like, if you want to achieve something... Like, you, you go and do it, right? But the, the now's a funny time, eh? Because it's like, if you, I find it hard to not have goals, but then it's a funny time the now because it's like, as you say, things are getting put on the back burner and it's like, you've got to practice acceptance a wee bit. So it's like, where, where, where do you both sit? Because it's quite, it's quite hard, but I find it quite hard to not be like, right, so I want to do that. But then you have got to just be like that the now, eh? Be like, nah, right. Acceptance, the days of day, appreciate what you've got. So, do you, at the end, do you find it hard or like, what, no, nah, just like, no? Nah. I've still got goals. I've still got goals. Yeah. And um, this situation we cannot control and we cannot, we have no idea. Eight weeks ago, when we went into lockdown, I genuinely believed we were going to lock down for three or four weeks. Do you know, I genuinely believed that. And I was I was devastated. I was absolutely devastated on my last two classes. I didn't know what was going to happen. I went, you know, I let it all spiral. I'm on my own with two kids. And actually, my eldest daughter, I think, had the virus that first weekend. I mean, so you said that, hi. I was scared for her. I felt anxious for the first time in my life. But, you know, we can't change, we cannot change it. We don't know, we don't know what's going to happen. Even, we've got to wait for this announcement. We're still on lockdown. No. You know, there's no point, I just think, in going any further forward than that. And who would have known, especially for you, Barry, you know, I know what you're like with your technology, that you'd even have gone online. So... <laughs> <laughs> I was, honestly, see the thought of taking a class on Zoom, man, I was like, oh my God. I was like, how am I going to do that? It's it, but it's easy, eh? It's not for easy. So, and actually, I, think so I just went to have PT this morning and the whole thing crashed, so I've had to reschedule it, so. Yeah. Well, I think it's, um, the Zoom means that you feel like you're still teaching, doesn't it? Because you can right. see it. You can still see everyone, um, so you still feel like you're coaching and you're still doing your 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 job, um, but just in a different way. And that's the acceptance part that this is the way it's going to be at the moment. And so what I'm trying to say is we've evolved and we've adapted from what has happened, and we'll just continue to keep doing that as it goes forward. It's funny how we do that, though. Eh? We adapt. Eh? It's like we have adapted. Like the first week or so, maybe a few people were like, but. We have adapted, Ken, and it's like, I think humans are, human beings in general are, like, really good at that, like, really good at adapting to, like, whatever circumstances are thrown up, do you know, and I think, ah, it's a brilliant trait, that, like, you said, Daryl, like, single dads with, like, a wee one and that, uh, un- like, but you adapted, eh, and you, it's like, I think human yeah. beings have got, like, an innate ability to just be like, right, got to get on with it, type thing. I think that humans can, I think there's no limit to what level they can really go to and what extreme circumstances as well. But I think that when they're really, really put up against it, you know, you've heard some tragic stories of people, but they, you know, they survived it. You know, like there's one guy, I remember I read a story years ago, but he got stuck. He got, he got his car hijacked in the outback and he was in the outback for, I think, 40 days. And he was eating bugs and stuff and he hadn't thing he'd lost like five stone. I think he was like a rake. And then finally somebody drove by and they found him and he survived. Like, 
they just there's so many the humans are just like the way they do it that it's like thing to me when my story at looking back wasn't a big thing like Zoe Zoe as well you look back and you said it didn't feel like a big thing but when you do reflect and you see how you've adapted and how you've changed uh, yeah, a natural thing comes over you and it just happens eh do you know what I mean see the the I've noticed with the with the post Zoe you you do some work for the Joshua Nolan Foundation and yeah. um, Tell us about that. Simon King is doing some work in the Joshua Nolan Foundation as well. I don't know if you know him, but and when when I seen it and I, I noticed that I thought, wow, like that's mad, but that's all connected. What, what is it that you do for the Joshua Nolan Foundation? Then? So I'm an ambassador for them, and that the event that I was doing today was for the Joshua Nolan Foundation. Yeah. And actually, um, so that's where my whole journey into fitness started because I'm a friends with Laura, who is Laura Nolan. She's the mother of Joshua Nolan. And she started the charity six years, seven years ago when after he died. And it was when she asked for people to run in that half marathon. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. So every, obviously to me, if it wasn't, had it been from that moment, which I'm very, I'm, you know, that, that's another moment I'm hugely grateful for, but it's a ripple effect, you know. But I've always fundraised for them um, throughout the last six years. And so when my cousin took his life um, two years ago, I at his funeral, I said, right, I've got to raise £10,000 in the next two years. And I did it in one, I did it in a year. Wow. Um, so just with other people doing, you know, people in my kind of circle doing loads of different things. Yeah. But I think people were getting fit. I'd run them, I'd run the full marathon. So the, the year that I turned 40, my dad died. I ran my first marathon and I started my own business. So, and then I, and then I went on to, I just did, I just adjusted, I love the way I say that, just did half marathon. <laughs> but, um, so I, did, I, I said, oh, well, people will be annoyed, or not annoyed, they get fed up fundraising or donating. For me running, oh, there she goes, another half marathon. So I did, uh, last year I did a full marathon and a half marathon on either side of it. So I did um, Stirling half marathon, Edinburgh full marathon, the Moor 84 half marathon, and then the Glasgow half marathon. And that, I raised about £4,000 doing all of that. And then other people, I did other things. I did some corporate events and we raised £10,000 for the Joshua Nolan Foundation. So I don't know if you know very much about them, but they're an Edinburgh-based um, mental health charity who um, their intention is to bring the um, statistics down around two people die in Scotland to suicide per day. And their intention is to reduce that number by offering um, a counselling service. And it's like an immediate um, service. You self-refer through their website, and they'll pay up to eighty percent of a block of ten sessions. And they've got, and they're seeing kids um, from eight, from aged eight. And it's anybody who's struggling with their mental health, or suicidal thoughts, or self-harming. And you know, self-harming comes in many guises. It's not just cutting. Yeah. It can be eating disorders. It can be self-loathing. You know. Um, that come, you know, it's, there's lots and all this comparison now with the kid. Well, not now; it's not a new thing. Comparison, but it's especially big with social media for all the kids on there um, looking at that and thinking, you know, when you're 12, you just have no idea who you are, really. You know, um, so it is available for anybody. I think people just don't realise it's for anyone. And they've got a new counsellor just on board who uh, specialises in the LGBT, let me see, LGBTQ community. <laughs> Make sure I say that right. Um, so they're non-government funded. They um, work completely with volunteers. Nobody gets paid. Um, they are a non-profit organisation. So every penny that they raise, so I think a £99, £99, Hundred pounds is raised, they get ninety nine pound fifty of that money. So, and I think at this time it's great that there's so much fundraising going on for the NHS. Uh, um, but you know, uh, that's a whole other debate. I won't even start on that. <laughs> but I think it's amazing. But there are so many little charities that are going to really, really suffer from all the races 
that have been cancelled, especially because this is the this is a big time of year for charities to for money to be raised. The London Marathon was cancelled. The Edinburgh Marathon was cancelled next weekend. The Great North Run, um, you know, Manchester was cancelled. Um, and people are going about with their vests on and they're running and they're raising cash and they're raising awareness. So it's really important. So that's what today, my event that I did earlier was about. It was um, because I'm not running the half marathon. Well, I'm not running the official half marathon. I'm not going to run a half marathon next Sunday uh, because I should have been doing that. But today's event was just come the solution. So of you do that before you have your breakfast, man. You just get up and do that before you have your breakfast in the morning. Me bother. 13 well, miles. Boom. Sorry. Coffee. <laughs> Easy peasy. Eh? 500 burpees before, during, and after. <laughs> no, not this time. I've not been, I stopped my training, um, so it won't be quite as easy. I think I'm going to choose to do a downhill run all the way. <laughs> I'll start up at me at Fair Mile Head and end up down in. Uh, Muscle bit off, I think, is my. Uh, so what advice would you give to anybody, like I, I, anybody that was maybe starting, thinking about starting their own business, or who was in like a a tough place now, and who was in like I can maybe a similar situation to the, yourself, or like everybody's obviously in a bit of a tough place now, but like what any inspiring words that you would give to anybody to like maybe offer a bit of support and inspiration. I think I think the biggest thing is trusting the process and trusting in yourself. And I know that isn't easy. So writing things down is really helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, just writing down and having a look at it, being able to see it on paper. But if you have something that you really feel strongly about, that you know that you want to make work, that feels like it's your passion and your path, just go for it. You know, failure isn't failure it's learning so if it doesn't work out you learn from that and you look at somewhere else don't think if it hasn't worked out that that's the end just look at different alternatives seek help go and speak to other people that have done it you know um and it's it just believe it's about believing in yourself thinking what you've done what you've achieved previously thinking about how that made you feel and just going forward to, Take it as a, taking small steps as well. Don't necessarily go for that massive goal. Look at what things you can do to put in place to get there um, in the end. And I think it's just, yeah, I think that's probably it's not very inspirational, but <laughs> I just trust the process. Thank you. Yeah, no, that was amazing. That was brilliant, Zoe. I, I think it's something like in society the now as well, like you mentioned failure there as well, eh? Like, you hear the word you hear the word failure and it almost seems like quite right done but it, like you you learn the most from that eh? you learn when maybe something doesn't work out as you thought or planned or that's where that's where you learn the most from so then you take that and you try and move on again so right. uh, and don't let other people that's a, that don't let what other people oh god you could never do that you know that is somebody's opinion it is not a fact i right. think that big thing as well is not listen you know there's always going to be somebody that will say to you you can't do that you can't no well, how could you could do look at all the other folk doing that and you're, you're not the same as them do you know well right. Right. Fail forward. just keep failing failing forward because every time you fail what you say you learn and you yeah. fall into you fall into where you're supposed to do and you learn that lesson from failing you go right that didn't work last time i'll try it a different way next time but just never quit do you know what I mean? Never ever quit on yourself because that's the real failure. Uh, but don't let anybody else put you off or like you say, Zoe, that's amazing. Amazing. Thanks very much. And well, thanks nice for guy. He's been bright. Well, hopefully when this is, I, I look forward, I, I bet that actually happens for you. I bet you get this center. I bet you do. At some point, some point in the line, you'll get this center. I'm telling you, man, I look forward to it. I look forward to seeing it. I Zoe, your story's been like really inspiring. Like, so, uh, Aye, it's been good to get to know you a wee bit more and see where you came from. And man, it must have been tough those dark nights and all that. Came when you first started carrying the letter. Oh my god! Oh I man! Know, I do not know what kept that 
I genuinely don't know at the time what kept me doing that in the rain and the wind and the snow. I mean, I've got a video of us doing burpees in the snow when we had the beast from the east. Do you know? Yeah. I, I mean, we didn't. I did. To, I took the classes. That's when I first took classes online. Um, but yeah, we were one day. It was just like, oh, we're all stir crazy. We're stuck in the house. If you want to meet up in the park, we'll do a class. My insurance will definitely not cover it, so you come at your own risk. <laughs> um, and it, was just, it was consistency and commitment to what I believed in and what I felt I was doing was the right thing. And, you know, there's been other sacrifices that, you know, that I've made, like I'm not always at home at tea time for the kids. Aye. But they have seen me really work hard and, and, and make a life for us that we're quite comfortable, do you know. Um, in just now, so that's important. Yeah, my, heart, my heart beats for you there, Zoe, when you say that. I love that. I love that, <laughs> like, love that, man. It's really inspiring. Like, yeah, thanks for coming on, Zoe, and like, and telling your story. And hopefully, anybody that watches it can maybe get a, a wee bit of inspiration or something that it's like, aye, that's what it's for. So, definitely, well, yeah, pleasure having you, Zoe, man. Thank you. I'm very grateful, always. <laughs> <laughs> always. Right, I'm glad you got that in there. It's true. Always grateful. No, thanks very much. I think what what else we could do is we could um, we could put the Joshua Foundation no uh, the link uh, in the comments once we launch the thingy. So for anybody that did want to donate, you know, hearing your story and, and what they're what they're actually trying to do, then it gives them that opportunity. So no, yeah, thanks. So you could do that two ways. You could, through there's a donation. You can donate through the www.joshuanolanfoundation.org. Mm -hmm. Or if you wanted to sponsor me, um, <laughs> you could do it in the Just Given page, which is uh, justgiven.com forward slash burpees and beyond. Burpees and beyond. <laughs> Many <laughs> times you said that this week, Zoe. Many times have you said that this week. A number. And I did, yeah. when we were doing the live stream today to Egg, I was like, a, um, Oh, what do you call it? Children in need. I kept, and you can donate at. <laughs> 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 we'll get that. We'll get that sorted then. Zoe's yeah. itching to get away and do some burpees in a living room. She's like, let's do it, man. Some burpees. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely. I'm away to wake my twelve-year-old up. I think is still sleeping in her <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Really? Dearie me, oh, man. That's a sleep and a half. Hey, Zoe. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> All right. Nice to see you, Daryl. Nice to see you, Daryl. Bye. Ooh.